Hello and welcome to this video. My name's Barry Beckham. An acquaintance of mine recently asked about a technique that I demonstrated quite some time ago for PTE AV Studio presentations where the title becomes a part of the image. I was surprised to see that I made the video he referred to quite a few years ago with PTE 8 and I thought perhaps it's worth looking at once again. One of the things I've always tried to do when making any presentation is to try to give the viewer a good first impression and our titles is the first opportunity we have to do that. It doesn't really matter whether we're making a tutorial like this one, a pictorial presentation, or even a story-based audio-visual. How we start the presentation is quite important. Now this technique will require software such as Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. In fact, any software that supports layers and masks. But the technique is easy and it's not time consuming either. We can make a start with the basics of this technique with this shot of the rows. So let's make a start by going to the toolbox on the extreme left hand side, selecting our text type tool and typing into the picture surface. One click and you'll see a load of gobbledygook appear. We can just type the title we wish to use. Hit the tick to commit the type. What I'm going to do is to just hold my control key. You can select the move tool from the top of the toolbox. But if I just touch the control key, you can see the cursor changes to a move and allows me to position the text wherever I want it. Now, all I wanted to do here was to just hide a little bit of the text within the petal of the flower. My text is perhaps just a little bit too big. If you want to reselect your text, with the text cursor selected from the toolbox, we just click and drag. But if I hit the tick, there is another way. If we double click the layer on the right hand side, quite a quick way to do that. Now up at the top of the screen, you can see I've got a 250 point selection here. And as I said, I think that's a little bit on the heavy side. So I'm going to drop that back to about 200. Hit the tick, hold the control key, because all I really wanted to do here was position the title down here so I could hide some of that letter E behind the petal here. Now, sometimes as well, it's useful if we spread the text a little bit by adding space between each of the letters. If you want to do that, click and drag, go to the top of the screen to the options here, and we've got the opportunity to make them deeper if we've got two rows of text or wider in our case here. I tend to put my cursor into that box and if I hit my up arrow, you can see exactly what it does. And if I hit the down arrow, it does something like that. It does make quite a nice difference to some of the text we use. Now I've increased it a little bit. Let's hit the tick and make a final change to the movement. We'll put it, let's just put it somewhere like that. We'll put, we need to have enough of the E outside of that petal so we can still read the text effectively. Now, of course, if we want to select a different font, and this one looks okay for what I want to use it for here, but we would need to click and highlight, and then we can change the font from the options at the top left of the screen. But what I want to do here is to move over to my layers on the right hand side because I'm going to add a bit of color to my text and maybe even an outline. To do that I'm going to go down to the effects at the bottom left of that palette and I'll select color overlay to start with. I'm going to pick up the little panel here or we'll click on it because I'm going to move onto the picture surface to select a color from within the image itself. I'm going to pick one of those yellow colors, 
but I'd like to make it a similar yellow, but maybe just a little bit darker. An alternative would be to pick up one of the colors of the rose. We could, let's select that. That looks quite nice. I was gonna suggest we can still vary this slightly by just moving the cursor around, but I think the selection of color I've got there is okay. So let's click okay to that. Let's take a look back into the layer styles here. Tick the little box to provide a stroked line. If I select this area here, we can see that the position is on the outside of the text and it's three pixels and it's black. It looks okay to me, but let's just take a look at how it looks on the inside. No, I'm not so keen on that. I think the outside looks best. We could also put a drop shadow in place, but given what we're doing here, I'm not sure that's needed. So I'm going to click OK. Now what I need to do is to do some masking here. And what I tend to do is to rasterize the layer and the effects so the masking doesn't affect these effects. I can go to the right of my text. You can make a copy of this before you start if you wish. But a four letter text or title is not hard to reproduce. I'm gonna right click alongside the thumbnail and choose rasterize type. And I'm going to right click again and rasterize the layer style. So our text now, how we selected it, is floating on its own transparent background. With that layer selected, if I create a layer mask, now we can start to do the work. First thing to do is to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to use control and the spacebar key. Click and drag. Now I need to pick up a soft edge brush. I'm going to go to my brush options here. I almost only ever use a soft edge brush, so I don't need to go searching for one, but you can do from the options at the top left of the screen. You can see I've got an enormous brush size here, so I'll use the square bracket keys to the right of the letter P to make that a lot more appropriate in size, probably something like that. Now I need to select black as my foreground color. I can switch them around on the bottom of the toolbar. And the last thing I want to do is to look up and take a look at the opacity and the flow of the brush I'm about to use. On this occasion, let's start with the brush at 100% flow and 100% opacity. You can see that as I brush on the mask, and you can see that I'm working on the mask here and not the image by the fact that the mask has a nice little frame around the outside edge over on the top right. So as I start to brush over this area, you can see it makes it transparent. We're not losing it though, because if we made a mistake doing something like this, if we go back to the bottom of the toolbox and switch back to white, we can repair what we've done. So there's no risk when we use layers and layer masks. It's part of their appeal. Incidentally, if you want to change the foreground color from black to white and vice versa, the X key does it very effectively, which I've just touched. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to make my brush a little bigger. I'm going to click around there hold the shift key and click down the edge of that petal to create that edge. I'll do the same down here too. And I think that needs to go a little bit further up, so I'll do that. And I'll do the same with the tail of the E as well. Once I've done that, I can make my brush bigger if I want to do the rest of the masking pretty quick. Now we can obviously fine tune what we've just done down the edge here. If we've made a mistake, we can switch to white and we can do any sort of repairs. But if I hit control zero, we've effectively done exactly what we intended to do. Now to use this in a PTE AV Studio slideshow, we would possibly turn off the text and save the base image then we turn on the text and save another copy. It would be pretty simple then to use two versions of the rows sandwiched either side of the rows 
with the text. Easy to bring the text on and off the screen and we have quite a nice effect. But here's another little tip with something like this. If I go to my shift key and click the mask, you can see we can turn the mask on and off. We just click the mask again. If I go to the Alt key and click the mask, you can see what I've actually done on that mask. Never looks very elegant when we see the mask like that, but when we see it combined together, it's pretty good. But of course we sprayed or painted just black on the mask to make parts of the E completely transparent. Let's bring them back a bit to give the effect that we're just about seeing the edge of the E through the petal. To do that I'd make my brush very big, make sure it covers the entire letter. I need to switch to white because if we sprayed or painted black to make it transparent then to bring it back a little bit I've got to use white so we'll do that. But now from the top of the screen I'm going to drop my flow to a very small amount, 1%. Zero, 01 should do that because I've got that little box checked to the right so I can change this with the numbers on the keyboard. Now when I come down to the letter E, if I just paint over that in one go, I just went down and back and suddenly you can suddenly see the rest of the E now becomes slightly faint. And we can do this as many times as we like. If you want to hedge your bets before you start doing this, select your text layer and hit Control J so you have a copy. But if I wanted to do the same another couple of times, I can just make that E a little more visible. Now as you can see with this example, I've done exactly the same as I did with the rose image a few moments ago. So we've got the image and the text as separate layers. What I'd like to do is I'm just going to hold my control key for the moment and click the text and drag it to the left. I think the size is not too bad, but I'd like to have the G going around the stem of the glass on the left, but I'd like the S to go around the stem of the glass on the right. So it means I've got to stretch my text a little bit and we did that before as well. So let's go to the top of the screen here. I'll put my cursor into that left and right arrowed box and I'll hit the up arrow. And I think that's looking okay. What we'll do is touch that control key once again. I'll just move that a little bit. And I think that's about the place I want to start. So what we can do next is to do much the same as before. We can select a color and maybe an edge effect. Previously I said that we could, if we wanted to, make a copy of the text layer. If you hit Control J, you can see that's pretty quick and easy. So we could turn one of them off if we wanted to keep one of them up our sleeve as an insurance and we could move forward with the top layer. So down at the bottom left of the layers then, we want the effects and the color overlay. Clicking the little square or moving on to the picture gives me the eyedropper. So I can select any color. There's red. The yellowy color gets a bit lost. Green is not bad, but I think blue may be quite good. That's a bit strong. I'll come down a bit further. Yes, I'm going to live with that. So I'm going to click OK to that. Let's take a look once again at the stroked command. Let's click that. We're going to get exactly the same effect as we did before. And it worked well before. So on this occasion, and to speed up the video, let's leave that alone and click OK. But once again, right click and I'm going to rasterize the layer style. And it's rasterized the layer as well there. So all I've got to do now is to add the mask. Down to the bottom left of the layers again, add the mask. Now we need to zoom in and decide what parts of the text we're going to hide and which parts are we going to allow to be revealed. Now while I'm thinking about that, I could just touch the B key on my keyboard, which is the equivalent of selecting the same brush we had previously. And I'll adjust the size of that. 
and also I'm looking over at the color picker I can see black is my background color so I need to go over and just hit that double headed arrow or the shortcut keys of X so what I think I'll do is to have this going over under and over or we could do it in reverse we could have that part of the G over and these two parts under let's take the harder of the two options so let's zoom in to that top curve of the letter G and we're going to use exactly the same techniques here I'm making my brush smaller so it mimics the edge there I'm going to click right on the edge Oh, I do need to remember to push my flow up to 100% just to get started here. So I'll do that again, one click. Then I'm going to hold the shift key, click a little further down and a little further down. There you can see I've got the edge done. Over to the left hand side, click, hold the shift, click and click. If we make a mistake, of course, it's not a problem, is it? Because we can go across here and we can do the masking we want to do. Then we can touch that X key and if you look over at the bottom of the toolbox you'll see the colors switch around. Now I can make my brush smaller. I could drop the flow down if I wanted to but I could also just repair that little bit. And you can see a little light line down there. I mean, if you wanted to deal with that and be really, really careful, come up a little bit bigger. Then drop the flow rate down to something like 5 or 10%. Let's choose 10. Because now, this is much more gradual. Easier to control. But there you can see, it didn't take too long to tuck the top of the letter G behind the glass. And we would do exactly the same to the bottom. Obviously the L we'd just leave as it was, the A we'd do exactly the same and the S on the right we would do the same with that too. But the techniques are identical. So there we have exactly the same techniques applied to the letter A and the letter S on the right hand end and we would do the same as before. We would save a version of this without the text and then one with the text. But of course there are times when we're getting creative when we may also want to save a copy with the text forward of the glasses. And in that case we could just hold that shift key, turn the mask off and save a version like this. And with the spinning round of the screen here you can see I've used exactly the same techniques we used with the rows just to make the G slightly transparent at the top so it does look as though we're seeing the text through the stem of the glasses. There are lots of opportunities to use this technique but of course we do need to select an appropriate image. If you enjoy the videos that I make and you're a YouTube viewer can I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to make sure that you're informed whenever I post a new video. Just a quick reminder, I don't earn any money from YouTube, I wish I could, but I cannot get enough people to subscribe to my channel to be able to even consider something along those lines. So if you could consider subscribing, I would be grateful. I'll see you next time.